Okay, the title of this talk is Engineered Chirality of One-Dimensional Nanowires by Megan Brigaman. I'm not Megan, my name is Patrick Irvin. I'm also a member of Jeremy Levy's research group at the University of Pittsburgh. I'm going to be telling you how we create nanowires at the interface between the conducting, uh, the, sorry, the insulating oxides lanthanum, aluminate, and strontium titanate, and how we engineer the properties of those wires by uh, engineering their structural properties. So this session, J65, is semiconductors, superconductors, and molecular qubits. So what are we doing in this session? Turns out that strontium titanate is a semiconductor. It is also a superconductor, which has been known since 1964. It has a transition, transition temperature of between 2 and 300 millikelvin. It is also a superconducting semiconductor, meaning that we can control its superconducting properties such as transition temperature via doping or electric field effects. <clears throat> so what about this molecular qubits part? Well, we're going to start with our superconducting semiconductor, that is lanthanum aluminate grown on strontium titanate. We're going to introduce nanopatterning via conducting atomic force microscope lithography, which is going to give us the ability to create structures which we can think of mo as molecular building blocks that we can use to create electron waveguides, super lattices in those waveguides, engineer their spin orbit coupling, and build towards um, build artificial quantum systems that we can think of as quantum simulation platforms. So our larger goal in the group is what we term correlated nanoelectronics. Correlated oxides are materials that have intrinsically interesting properties such as superconductivity and ferroelectricity. Whereas semiconductor nanoelectronics achieve much of their interesting and emergent properties via fabrication of mesoscopic devices in semiconductors. We wish to combine these two paradigms in such a way that correlated oxides can be used to enhance the properties of mesoscopic uh, semiconductor devices. And conversely, fabricating mesoscopic devices out of correlated oxides can be used as a way to understand and reveal properties of the oxides themselves. So what we wish to do is take advantage of the extreme nanoscale control that we have over the LAOSTO interface. We can control the, the growth or the thickness at the monolayer scale and um, create conducting features as small as 2 nanometers um, at the interface between the two materials and those conducting sites do not have to have any resemblance to the underlying lattice structure of the LAO STO. So we can begin with a solid state atom or the single electron transistor. We make an array of them. We can think of this as a new Hamiltonian constructed from this lattice of sites. And in this way, we can begin with a, the superconducting LAO-STO interface, which we can think of as our, um, Hamilton, our ground state Hamiltonian. We perturb that system via nanoscale patterning in order to achieve new Hamiltonians. So in this way, we hope to realize Feynman's dream of quantum simulation using uh, our LAOSTO platform. So if you're not familiar, let me just um, quickly go over LAOSTO uh, heterostructure. So lanthanum luminate is grown on epitaxially on strontium titanate. If the, is, um, this system has a tunable metal insulator transition in which uh, if LAO is grown above three unit cells, the interface becomes conducting. Below that, it remains insulating. Uh, if you're at that critical thickness, there's an tun uh, electrically tunable metal insulator transition which can go back and forth metastably between insulating and conducting states. There's a tunable spin orbit coupling, tunable superconductivity, 
and even tunable magnetism, electrically tunable magnetism. So this interface itself exhibits very rich and interesting physics and every major phenomena found in the solid state, which makes it a interesting and viable candidate for uh, engineering or simulating quantum systems. So what we do is begin with LAO grown 3.4 um, 3 unit cells or 1.2 nanometers. We deposit um, gold electrodes in order to allow us to measure transport at the interface. We then introduce um, a conductive AFM tip by Applying a positive bias to the tip, we can remove electrons from the surface, leaving protons on the surface that will attract electrons to the interface. A negative voltage will um, remove protons, restoring the insulating state. The video in the upper right is showing writing of current and voltage leads, and it just finished writing a main channel. Now we will modulate the tip voltage, positive and negative, in order to create a super lattice in that main channel or create um, insulating, uh, conduct, um, insulating barriers in the device. So using the, sorry, and then we can create structures as small as two nanometers using that technique. So we've been able to demonstrate the creation of single electrons transistor. Uh, we've discovered a, a state in which electrons pair but are not superconducting. We can create electron waveguides in which and we can control the number of transverse channels electrically and magnetically, and we can tune electron-electron uh, interactions from uh, attractive to repulsive in these kinds of devices, in addition to many more examples of um, nanoscale control over the interface. So again, we're going to um, begin with the ground state Hamiltonian and, and, and perturb it. So we're going to consider the straight electron waveguide as the ground state Hamiltonian. Then we can perturb it in different ways, such as adding a lateral modulation, vertical modulation, or a combination of the two, which I'll call, refer to as helical uh, modulation, which is lateral and vertical in quadrature. So lateral modulation will be achieved by tracing a sinusoidal path transverse to the, the, the wire axis vertical modulation will be achieved by modulating the AFM tip voltage and a combination of the two um, is expected to produce a helical electron motion and um, okay so it turns out that adding these different types of modulation to the nanowire do result in new and interesting properties relative to the ground state electron waveguide. So what I'm going to focus on in the remainder of the talk is the H0, no modulation, and H3, the helical modulation. So the no modulation case, we create a, an electron waveguide by writing a nanowire that is bracketed by two highly transparent potential barriers here and here. These potential barriers allow us to tune the chemical potential in the main channel with a side gate VSG. We observe quantized conductance in the main channel in which we see steps of E squared over H, 1, 2, 3, 4, E squared over H as a function of the chemical potential in the wire. The transconductance, which is the derivative of, of the conductance with respect to mu, um, and magnetic field res reveals a rich subband structure consisting of vertical and lateral modes and spin degrees of freedom. And this, um, this data is well described by a waveguide description um, of uh, electrons in that wire. And I also wanted to point out that recently we've reported um, the emergence of a sequence of 1, 3, 6, 10 e squared over h, which is the third diagonal of Pascal's triangle. So now for the helical modulation, which is inspired by chiral molecules, um, which display uh, enhanced electron transport and spin polarized transport. And we wondered, can we create or simulate this kind of molecule in um, LAOSTO? So our de device consists of a control waveguide in series with a helical super lattice. 
Uh, the control waveguide displays uh, typical electron waveguide behavior, um, consisting of the ladder, those uh, sub the subband structure and um, deep pairing above some um, magnetic field. And the helical superlattice um, reveals uh, several new features. One is uh, an enhanced pairing. So uh, if we go out to 18 Tesla, we see that the first step is at 2 e squared over h rather than 1 e squared over h, indicating that the electrons have not depaired uh, up to 18 Tesla. This is in contrast to the control waveguide device, which has a pairing field of a, um, approximately 9 Tesla. And the second feature I want to point out are these red and black stripes, or this interference pattern, um, which indicate a, a decrease in conductance uh, after crossing this first subband. So we think that this data is described by having a in-plane axial spin orbit field. Um, if electrons will, um, if electrons enter the helical section of the super lattice, they will then process about the effective magnetic field consisting of the external magnetic field and the spin orbit field. If they do not process an integer number of times before leaving uh, the wire, we can see a decrease in conductance. So that is um, consistent with our observations of uh, oscillations as a function of magnetic field indicating um, uh, which will change the, the precession frequency of electrons. Um, and we see a, a decrease uh, in conductance if we look at uh, conductance as a function of psi gate or chemical potential. So we've created um, other similar helical super lattice devices which show qualitatively similar behavior. So in summary, we are developing a solid state platform for 1D quantum si simulation uh, of, from the complex oxide heterostructure LAL on STO. Um, and we wish to engineer quantum phases in 1D nanowires uh, formed at that interface. So future directions will consist of further theoretical modeling of the devices and work to try to improve the reproducibility of, of, of them. So thank you for your attention. Uh, I'd like to also thank uh, many members of our group here. And uh, I also show a list of other, other talks that you can go listen to. Thank you.